I feel um, council is something from, that you talk from deep inside of you. And I really feel very special about it. To me, council is an opportunity for children to, or adults, to sit together and really listen and speak to each other at a level that they don't often have the opportunity to uh, communicate. There's this desperate need to know what other people think of you. Um, that question, although it's never been addressed directly, is always addressed in council. In the beginning, having not been familiar with the ideas of what a council was and what ceremonies of that type were like, I was rather skeptical <laughs> and a little annoyed at the thought of having to take a class in which I would be participating in such an activity. And it has turned out to be really amazing. <laughs> of course, just I'll quickly remind you of the rules. Um, you have to talk from the car and keep it brief. And if you don't have an idea, you can talk about following things. You know, being popular about boy and girl books or friendship or whatever. And I think I'll start. Um, and you have to listen from the heart. And I think I'll start. I really don't have anything to say. So <laughs> I think the element of emphasizing the circle and um, having some sort of ritualistic instrument that's passed around, I think those are features that are taken from the Native American tradition. When we have uh, a talking staff that we've worked with a number of times, there's something very ancient about that, you know, that, something very physical about relating to this instrument. And you can really feel when it comes around to you that the energy has been built into that. Um, and that's something that we learned from the Native Americans, um, but it's not something that we copied from them. What we're going to be talking about today is something that we did speak about once before. You've been here um, for four days, and 
There are things that you really are enjoying and appreciating, and there are things that some of you are really angry about. Um, and a lot of that talking goes on outside of council, and this is a council, at any council, those both sides are invited in, and particularly today. Um, it's really important to feel free to share the negative side of your experience as well as the positive. I feel like I'm being restricted here. I mean, I, I came up here, I got filled with a lot of hot air and, and thinking, you know, wow, this is going to be really great. And, and, you know, and I had no, I didn't, I didn't want to come up here at all, but, you know, I finally say I'm going to try it. And I come up here and it's been a real disappointment, I got to say. I, I know, I know that I've done a lot of, you know, a lot of things to, to acknowledge it, but I, I, I think that there are a few people here who think the same way I do, but won't choose to say because they're not like me. They won't, they're not going to be rude about it. I'm going to be rude about it because if I don't like something, oh. if I don't like something, I'm going to say it. And it's too bad that that there's certain people here who, 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 who get on me for it because they're expressing their opinions in a nice way while well, mine are expressed negative. They're just emotions and emotions are, are meant to be expressed. Isn't that the purpose here to express your emotions? So I'm, I'm expressing my emotions, and that's the way I do it. If people can't accept it, then they're all then the, the point is defeated here. I don't know. Nothing really bothers me here. Anything that does, but nothing. I don't know. And even the experiences we've done haven't been. Also, on one hand, they haven't been horrible for me, and then they also haven't been just the best thing in the world to come to me. So I'm just sort of neutral on everything. But I, I'm having a good time. Getting to know everybody, you know, and um, that's been the biggest, the best thing I've done about this trip. Uh, I don't mean to take sides, but it kind of annoys me how that you're getting on John's back. Then I'm what? Oh, uh, this is a counter. Um, I mean, I like you a lot, Paul, but it kind of pisses me off. But I think it pisses off a lot of people when you sort of just interrupt the whole spirit of things. Huh. And I know, I know you want to express your opinions and stuff, but this was also a trip to learn some self-discipline. And I don't think you took advantage of that. I've enjoyed myself here. I couldn't really figure out why it was because I thought that a lot of the things that we've been doing have been really pointless. Oh, oh, oh. And um, I agree with some of the other people in the group that a lot of the jobs that I have been doing have been created to spend my time oh. Oh. and to teach me a lesson which I don't need to be taught. Um, the community here is hostile oh. or indifferent. <laughs> Or condescending, and yeah. I've been really, really annoyed by most of the people who live here on a permanent basis. I've gotten about three friendly faces the entire time I've been here from people um, who live here, and that has well, made me really, really unhappy. Um, on the other hand, there's the interaction that we've had with this group, which has entirely made up for that, but I'll be really honest with you, I think that we could have done this exact same interaction in a very different setting, and it would have been oh, much more meaningful. Oh, million um, holes. I've had a very difficult time with a lot of the things that we've done here. Oh. This, the sweat was really great, though, oh. and oh. I'm really, really glad that I had that experience. I'm oh. very glad that I chose to participate in that. Um, <laughs> but I can't really talk about that too much. I guess it was just really personal. More introspective. Oh. 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 I'm really afraid for this council at the moment. Um, in a lot of ways, when we came here, I think I was the most negative person in this group. I was really skeptical of everything that went on, and more than thinking it was a joke, I thought it was dangerous. There are a lot of things wrong with this place. I don't know any one of us who would choose to live here. 
The food may not be great or it may not be what you're used to eating. But I don't think that was the point of this trip. Oh. Oh. The point of this trip, the reason this is a requirement at Crossroads, is not because this is summer camp. We're not here to see how much fun we can have, although if we have fun, that's great. In a lot of ways, we're here to find out something new about ourselves and each other. And we did that. I can look around this room and look into the eyes of any person here and I can know a little bit about what it's like to be that person, what, what that person feels, what that person sees. And I, there is a bond that couldn't have been established you know, in little councils back at Crossroads. It had to be done in another situation. And yeah, this place may be screwed up from a lot of our perspectives, but if we did that, if we really accomplished that, which I, I think we did, it's pretty damn amazing. Oh. Oh. I just want to say I think it would be very helpful to the community, even if it would be hard for them to hear some of the things that you said. We're going to have a chance tomorrow at the final council. And rather than making that usual superficial kind of, you know, stuff, which sometimes it is, um, I think it's real important for them to hear some of the things particularly that were said in this, in this area. It is hard to record the essence of council and what really happens in council. Uh, it is between the lines. It is in the ether. Um, there is a mystery about council. And even if one is in one, and uh, one has participated for a long time in, in the council, even with a, with a group for many, many weeks, it is still hard to understand and describe what happens. Part of that, I think, has to do with our lack of understanding about silence and how much can happen in silence. Our culture is so verbal and so much to do with the outer mind that we imagine that there's nothing happening in the silences. And in council, everybody but one person is listening. So most of the action in council is silence. It's in that attention that the council actually works, there's, that the empathy builds, that the understanding and the sharing and the sense of connectedness begins to happen. People who uh say something that you really identify with, even if it's not something that you would have said, if they say something that, you know, you, you really identify with or you feel for them, or, any, or anything where you really would like to express yourself, all you say is ho. And ho basically means I'm with you and I understand what you've said and although it's not me, I see that part of you and I accept it. Um that a lot of my fears about everybody here are gone. Oh. And that's, for me, that's something really hard to do, to not be scared of people. Thinking back on my high school years, um, there was really no opportunity to talk about my feelings or to talk about the fact that I've never connected with this person who I've been in school with for four years, you know, and suddenly here they are and they can talk about it and it's like the floodgates open. You're making me sound like, I, like I'm, I'm disrespectful and everything that here is, is lame. Well, hell, I'm uncomfortable. This stuff scares me. I was really scared when I saw the way that seen that, 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 that monk thing, whatever it is out there, the way people chant in the morning, that scares me. I don't, I don't, need, I don't, want, I don't need to be taken to another place and, and shown that this is a culture needing to see other things. I have my mind. I know what I want in life. As far as this particular group, it was a group that had a lot of difficulty with accommodating to Ojai. Uh, every group has their accommodation problems, and that's part of why we go to Ojai. The food is very different. Uh, the comforts are mostly vanished from their lives. And uh, we know uh, that is going to happen, and that, that's part of the whole program because it strips away what is familiar to them, and in the absence of their familiar patterns, they begin to see who they really are in, 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 all, in all kinds of new ways. <laughs> Ritual is like the heartbeat. It's the rhythm. Ritual is something that you do with a certain kind of um, regularity, with a certain kind of uh, movement, like the tides, like the days and the nights and the seasons, that remind you of the rhythm of life, that give you a sense of um, seeing yourself in a similar situation uh, time after time, and therefore seeing yourself as a, as a story unfolding.
I respect that they really get into, I don't get into that personally, the rituals with the, the sweat and the whole thing with the pipe ceremony, but it just doesn't do anything for me. But I can sit there and watch them and really appreciate how they get into it and respect that. I think over time, what I've realized is that there is nothing dangerous in these particular rituals and that letting yourself go and letting yourself chant and letting yourself say, you know, what, what's being said by everyone else is not, it's not sacrificing part of your person in this particular instance. Ritual is universal. Ritual occurs uh, for, you know, in, in situations which are um, moving towards unconsciousness as well as in situations that are moving towards consciousness. Uh, to throw out ritual because it can be used in cult is, is to throw out the baby with the bathwater. So when this issue comes up with the kids, basically we don't really say a lot. We just become as authentic as we can. We open up the issue. We, we challenge them to challenge us. We challenge them to challenge themselves. We challenge them to not swallow anything. Uh, what's fair game in council is to say this ritual is full of it. I have a pocket knife. Do you? That's right, you're the prepared camper. I forgot about you. The kids are used to uh, passing the talking stick in a council and doing storytelling or speaking about different aspects of their life. But in the sweat, it's very cramped, it's pitch black, you can't see anyone, you're not sure who's speaking, you're huddled next to someone else, and these glowing hot rocks are brought in, water's poured on them, and it becomes extremely hot. If you add to that intense environment uh, a strong drum beat and uh, some strong singing, it becomes a, just extremely strong environment. And it's in that kind of place that um, some sort of breakthrough can take place. I didn't know if my eyes were open. I didn't know if I was awake or asleep or closed around the ground or floating or what was happening except for I just I saw believe it or not I saw these white swirls that entered in from the left and went around in a spiral that was pretty delirious by the program I thought my face was going to melt off <laughs> <laughs> just by being in that it broke down physically emotionally and everywhere else just, just to a kind of a basic level hmm. You can just get beyond all the bullshit. As I came back to breathing, it, the fourth round was, it was kind of painful. Like, just sitting there in all that heat, but I made it, and I'd like to thank you, Tessa, for uh, holding my hand. Because I was really scared. There were times yesterday in, in that first round of uh, the sweat, I really wanted to hug every one of you because you guys were all going through something, but it wasn't that you were going through it alone. You were willing to, some, in some cases, cry in front of us and say what you really felt and not be afraid of it. And I'm sorry that that has to always happen in a place that's so far removed from where we usually are. It had to happen in a hot room with lots of steam. <laughs> and I, I want to keep that spirit. It was a very difficult trip for me, in lots of ways, personally, because I got caught between the worlds, which is a hard place to be. And there were times that I felt um, not part of this circle, and felt very much, um, you know, the pain of the struggle that was going on in the community, and the very, I'm very part of the change that's happening here. There were other times where I felt very much part of this circle, uh, out of the love and the honesty that I felt between and among you. You need a good council chief. You need someone, and I think Jack does this very well, who holds um, a certain kind of space.
If people start indulging in their lower self or start speaking out of turn or moving, you know, moving off of the format, let's say we're supposed to tell stories and someone starts hurling accusations at someone else, it's really that council chief's responsibility to, to keep things on the road. To become a council chief, you study your own life to begin with. To become a council chief, you um, have humility, you have experience, you have the knack of sharing your own life, whether it's through story or through even the quality of your silence, in such a way that people experience the authenticity of who you are. Acknowledgement of the interaction of the group of us from Crossroads and the community, the group of us from the community. And um, the spirit of it is to put out what it is that um, we experienced in this interaction so that we may learn from it, to acknowledge gifts and to set challenges to ourselves and to each other. When I first got here, I didn't feel welcome. I felt like the people in the community were being were judging me on sight, and that I was just oh. a 17-year-old per person. It didn't matter that I was a girl or boy, and it didn't matter who I was, and that I was here to learn a lesson and to do all this work. And I just felt like I was being judged before they even knew who I was. And, and that was upsetting to me. But as, I, as the time went on, I realized I sort of felt like there was some tension within the community. I don't understand it. And maybe that was why they weren't, people here weren't being able to be as open. And But all the people then afterwards, as I think we got used to it, <coughs> we all meshed really well. And I've been able to talk to most everybody and that's really cool. A lot of the impressions I got were kind of bad. And it just kind of, I think that one thing that upsets me the most is that it, it seems like we come up here to kind of learn something from you guys and to, you know, see see what you're doing with your lives and, and how it differs from ours and set that as, as, as like an example of a different way of life. But I think that you guys have just as much to learn from us oh, as we do from oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. And, and what's important is the interactions. Um... Well, what occurs to me to say is um, that for those of us who live here, this is our home. And so we're not just a business, and uh, or we're not just a place that, we're not just a school. So that when you come up here, it's like we're inviting you into our home. And um, so that's a little bit different than, than your normal program for school kids. And uh, I think the, the negative reflection is good to get because it's real and it's honest and it does reflect things that are going on in the community. So I just want to um, acknowledge what people have said because um, there's truth in it. After yesterday's council, um, I was talking with Tessa and we were thinking about what it was we wanted to say to the community here. and. You guys all know yesterday's council was a little bit negative, and we had a few things we wanted to say to the community about the attitude that we felt. But we decided there were a few people who had done so much for us that we would have to make it a point to exclude them and tell them that we really love them. And, you know, we started out, Skip and Brother John and Bob, and the list grew and grew and grew. And, you know, there's no way to end this list, because although there were a few people who on occasion were a bit negative, on the whole, everybody, and especially everybody in this room, and some people who aren't, like Lola, but, you know, you know, Shim and Bob, everybody here was great. And, you know, if you do think about it, we did come into their home, and for them to be that open to us, is is really fantastic. 
it's always nice to see the crosshairs energy here because we don't we don't get a lot of young people on the land so this is the land's chance to take in from young energy and wild energy and <laughs> crazy energy <laughs> And uh, I think one of the best parts about it is this council because it's really one of the few chances that we get really this kind of feedback from people, honest, open feedback about how we reflect onto you guys and vice versa. And I think that it was a very good point that we do learn as much, if not more, from you guys on a weekend like this as you, you learn from us. All in all, you know, it felt good to get away, but I don't like the way things are run here, and I, I, and I feel uncomfortable a lot of the time when, when it comes to the outside stuff. But when it comes to being with the with the, the count and the councils and stuff, those were the moments that I that I'll cherish all the time, oh, wow. that I won't forget ever, because there's a lot of a lot of potentially big hearts that were open, including mine. For me, counsel and therapy are in parallel lines. Uh, I see them as serving similar purposes sometimes for people, but being very, very different and coming from a very different tradition. Counsel comes from an ancient tradition, which is as old as the shamanic journey is. So the whole flavor of counsel is very different. It's ancient, it has to do with ceremony, and although there are certain ceremonial aspects to therapy, um, it's very, very different. In council, the therapy, if you want to use that word, takes place by the witnessing of the whole circle, by the sharing of the group. And that's very, very different than the specific focus on one person. In council, you never have to be on the hot seat if you don't want to. You can, uh, you can pass, you can be silent, you can share nothing, you can share superficial things. There isn't that same focus, so the pressure of the confrontation is very different. It's not therapy. A lot of people think it is when you come in there. The point of counsel is to help bring out the part of the human that is there, but it's often hidden behind being a teenager. Um, it doesn't have to carry over to be valuable. All it has to do is help the person who's involved realize that they may have an emotional side, that they may have a very caring and vulnerable side, and if they can realize that, then inevitably in later life, they'll be more comfortable with themselves. This was a group that bonded extremely well, and there was very, very powerful transformative support in the in the bonding and so it was a group that changed as much as any group that I can remember it was a very difficult four or five days for many of them but they moved very dramatically in a very short time said that I had like the second I got in touch with my family it automatically went down to school like that it was school gruel yeah and, and it's weird I did my homework that night I studied for about four hours that night it was no problem I had no, I had no problems with that I slept fine um, everything was fine and I think the transitions not me trans having transitioned from Ojai to, <coughs> to to Los Angeles that's fine I can do that in a second I think the transition is it's more of me still trying to remember Ojai, trying not to forget it, me trying to, you know, live it in a way. I was really excited coming to Skull Monday because I was excited because everyone said, well, we're all going to look at each other in the hall and it's going to be like, oh, no, <laughs> circle, circle. <laughs> and, and so I was really excited about coming to school the next day just for that. It was nice to come to school and see everybody, like Cheryl said, like, had this big grin on my face every time I saw someone and I saw Kim showing me her car and we were just talking and 
second period, I have free, and I usually never talk to anybody, but now there's like Cam, I didn't realize, and Carl, and me, and Roxanne, and we're just sitting there talking, and talking about how like we wish we were still kind of there, but then home too, like home <laughs> places up there or something. I had a really hard time coming back. And, uh, I walk in the door to my house, and immediately and my mother's like, well, did you have a good time? Did you go swimming? You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not what this was about. This, this was not you know, your typical kind of retreat. And then every time I try and explain it to somebody, you know, I sound like an idiot. I sound like oh. I'm a cult recruiter. <laughs> and it's really terrible because everyone feels compelled to smile at me as I'm telling them this. And I know what's going on in their mind because it goes on in my mind too. You know, what kind of idiot are you? You really bought into all that. <laughs> So, you know, I'm having this trouble with my parents, and I got kind of angry at them the first night because they kept asking questions that really had nothing to do with anything we did. Oh. And they wouldn't let it rest that, you know, it's not something I can really explain. I think part of the problem is that, you know, before I left for Ojai, I'd never really had a chance to um, investigate a whole side of myself, which was this, this non-logical, very emotional side, which didn't it wasn't allowed to come out before, and now I'm sort of very much still in that frame of mind, and I'm having trouble dealing with people who are in the place that I was before I left. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the elements of transformation have to do with becoming aware of the patterns that exist in your life, whether they're patterns that have to do with roles, whether they're patterns that have to do with relationship or reactiveness, Patterns that have to do with expectations. In, in the case of, say, teenage kids, there would be patterns that have to do with going to a school, getting ready to go to college or go out and get a job, uh, expectations of parents and teachers and so forth. All these patterns become uh, unconscious parts of ourselves. So the first step in transformation is to become aware of the patterns, to see them in other people. Counsel is a wonderful way to do that, to become aware of them in yourself. The second step is to set the intention to transcend them, to transform, to go beyond the form of your particular set of patterns. It's kind of hard to explain because coming back, I was in such high spirits because I couldn't wait to get home. But some personal things happened when I got home that just really screwed me up. So I, coming to school the next day was really hard. I don't think I slept a wink on Monday night at all. And, and I, I came to school and I was just really down, but it felt weird. I, 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 it was also mixed with the Ojai because I didn't know what to feel. I felt so, I felt like I was in a, like, I, I, I couldn't stand still. I mean, I had to like, I wanted to just scream at the world, like, hey, what's, something's different. And the first person I saw was Brett, and it, and it, and it, because I, I got there early. So early, like, I'd never gotten there early. And I, and I got there because I couldn't sleep. And, and I saw Brett, and, and just the, the people that I saw, and it, and it's just, a, there's, a, there's definitely a, a bond between us all, because you, you feel it. I mean, people I never even said hi to before up there, and now I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm hugging them, telling them that they're, you know, they're wonderful and everything like that. <laughs> so, so I mean, there, there, there's definitely, oh, hi, still in me, and, and damn, I can't get that chant, we are the needle, whatever. The <laughs> I, I learned so, man, I learned so much up there. I learned, the most important thing to me is what I learned is I learned patience. Man, I, I learned to, to be a lot more, like, attentive, you know, believe it or not. But and that's that's like real. I'm really stoked on that because especially when I'm going to argue with my girlfriend or something, I'm not. I'm sitting here and I got a smile on my face. So I'm not going to yell or something. And she's like, she's like, why aren't you yelling at me? Why aren't you, <laughs> why aren't you getting mad at me? Like, I'm not, you know, and I'm cool. And that's 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 okay. one thing. I'm getting oh. better. You know, I still got my nervous tension attacks, but you know, we all, oh. we all, oh. we all, we all have it in us. And trust comes from experience, like everything else. It comes from being in a situation which is scary and leaving it feeling, oh, that was okay. It was hard and, you know, I was nervous and my heart was pounding and I felt like a stupid fool, but nobody came down my throat and uh, nobody looked at me as if I was some kind of crazy person. And, oh, and then the next time it's, oh, and then the next time it's, oh. When I'm in council... I really feel like I can say what I'm feeling because I'm in a safe environment where if I say something that's very personal to myself or if I say something about another person or about an issue, 
no one can come out and attack me right right off without even without listening to my justifications and so I, I feel safe I can t I can say what I feel there my first my first feeling was the judgment you know a lot of these people I've gone to school with for four years now but I never really talked to them and then we go up to this place and I judged them you know like they're kooks I don't like them you know I don't I don't even want to deal with some of these people. And I listen to them speaking. Wow, I, I've grown to, I, I, I have this love for them, this feeling that I've never felt before, you know. I can't imagine life without the expectation or the anticipation of transformation. And um, when you have gone beyond the forms of your patterns, you find new aspects of yourself. You find the infinite capacity of the human condition. For me, this is the essence of the spiritual awakening. I can't talk to my parents about certain things. I can't, there's only one or two people I feel in my life who, I can talk to and counsel because I feel so safe there has allowed me to vent these feelings and thus I've become less angry at the people around me and I've also heard other people's feelings and so my attitudes towards them have changed. Um, for example, you see someone here at school and you think they're just really obnoxious and they have no mind and they have no feelings and they're just, you know, violent and you don't want to listen to them, you don't want to talk to them. But when you're in council, you really hear what they have to say. And that changes your whole attitude about them. You can see, you see different sides of people. I like the love and I like the peaceful. I wish everyone would know good. Stand in the hard light. I hold the hand. I walk with the teacher. We welcome in the morning, singing together. Can you feel the love that's in my heart? Can you see the flare we got to stop? Burn like a big in the night. Welcome to our life. Oh, oh.